to Horror Movies with Friends. This is day 13. I'm Andy Green. This is Della. I'm actually Wolf Mandy Screen for today and the next 18 more days because I am having 31 days of horror movies, friends, puppies, and drink pairings. And this time we are afraid of the coffee. We are, we have to stay up to not fall asleep in a myriad of haunted, haunted houses because, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me introduce my screened guest, Lizzie Hoganson. Hoganson. Ooh, did I do it wrong? Oh, I, did it. I say it's Hoganson, like Hulk Hogan. That's, yeah. I feel like I did it, I just stumbled over the it's, words. It's, yeah, it's, it's very intimidating. No, I have one of those things where I, I think in high school is the last time where you actually need to know people's last names, and I never say them out loud until this moment, and then I'm like, wait. Yeah, no, yeah. You, you're, you're pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty good. You're pretty good, we'll you get better. It, yeah. We'll get better. Um, well, Lizzie uh, is a stop motion animator, artist, friend, and haunting enthusiast. Is that, is, well, is that putting you, uh, is that too generous? I mean, I feel like it's a movie I have memories of, and I, I think like my enthusiasm for it comes through yesterday when I texted you to an attempt to like change the seat of Chucky. Um, <laughs> so you, you were regretting this decision already. I mean, it's like, I feel like it's a lot of pressure on like, um, two movies that like rewatching re them. I was like, yeah. I mean, the first one's actually a good movie. The second one's not. And it's like, yeah, you know, this would be like a great movie for someone who like likes good movies to talk about. But I live for trash. So. Well, so that's why we're doing both. Both, exactly. All right, so the good movies so, for me. Yes. Trash is for you. Mm -hmm. We are watching The Haunting, the 1963 film, uh, directed by Robert Weiss. And that is not available to stream at this time, but uh, it's available to rent wherever you like to rent things. Um, and then we also are watching the 1999 version of The Haunting. Directed by who? By um, Jan de Bond. Did, did, I, did I get his name right? I think you did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Speed uh, and what Speed else? Speed 1, Speed 2, yeah. Twister. Then he did The Haunting. Then he did Laura Croft. Um, two, I think, and those were the only ones that he directed. But he's also the cinematographer on Jim. What what was he? You knew the cinematographer. Like Die Hard. Oh, and Roar, right? Roar. He got into Roar, Roar yeah. which is the only reason I'm married is the movie Roar. So Jan, this is for you. Um, but I'm also mad at you now for watching this movie. Uh, no, no, I think it was great. Uh, that is available on Showtime. You can uh, give me a call, and I'll give you my dad's login. And uh, yeah, so. You did say you had some memories of this movie, but before we get into that, I don't think I, I'm gonna. We need coffee. Yes, I don't, we do. Would you like? You'd like some coffee? I'd like some coffee. Okay. Yes. All right. So, uh, this is another from Brandywine Coffee Roasters. I'll try and get it in uh, right there. Here. Are you afraid of the coffee? Ooh. And this is a Colombian El Mirador blend. And let's. Uh, here, I'll pour yours first. Let's have this. Oh, this glorious liquid. Just go right um, in for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Of course. Della, would you like to sniff it? Yes, Della, a coffee oh, drinker. Oh, okay. No, you lick the coffee. Oh. Okay. Thank that you. means it must be. Dogs it must be like good. It. Yeah, she, dogs uh, like it. Um, she eats trash. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. So um, she but, loves uh, but the I, haunting. Like, this is um, like. My favorite sort of coffee I would describe is like tasting kind of like garbage water. Like I don't know, like that's your favorite. Kind well, of like coffee. the kind that like it has like <laughs> like that kind of like compost sort of like. Do you mean like sort of like diner coffee that's been in there all day? No, the like the like underlying like flavor notes or that kind of like compost, almost like vegetative sort oh, of. Oh, like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you... I call it like garbage water, like you know, like the like liquid runoff you would get from compost. I got so, it now. Yeah, you, yes. it sort of tastes like the soil, and it has some nutrients yes. from the the garbage from the whole day. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That. interesting. So, let's well, let's see what garbage yeah. we we can sample on this. What tasting notes? I think it's maybe still too hot, but tastes like coffee. Ooh, that's a dark. This one's dark. Mm -hmm. This one is. I definitely taste the toffee. Um, I get the butterscotch, and that is, I am cheating, it does say that on the back here. So do you get, I get, the, do you get uh, the blood orange sparkling water? Yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, there is sort of like a, like, I guess it's kind of like a sour citrus note. Mm -hmm. um, so you can call it blood orange, you could call it regular orange. 
Um, but <laughs> you can but call it's blood it, orange is spookier. But like, exactly, but like yeah. since it's spooky season, it's bloody orange, blood orange. So it's it's really good though. Um, I think it's gonna there's gonna be an evolution as we drink this coffee. I might go insane, mm -hmm. uh, like Lily Taylor mm -hmm. or uh, Julie Harris. Julie Harris. Harris. I probably yeah. should have like the names and stuff like written down, but I didn't. those will be just right under here. Editor Andy gets to do all the, okay. all the fun work. Um, but Julie Harris, she's in East of Eden. Is that accurate? Did I make that up? Jim? 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 No, he doesn't want to help. <laughs> Wait, say that again? Julie Harris, East of Eden? Yes. All right. Okay. Jim's our fact checker. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Jim is the ghost of this apartment. Mm -hmm. um, and so, okay. You have memories of haunting, and that was sort of why you had some, it's like a childhood? Yeah, so like the 1963 one, I like remember it, I probably like 10, maybe a younger, um, my grandparents' house, they had like, it was essentially like an old farmhouse, like on like a couple of acres, but it was in the middle of like Richmond, like the city, and it just like, the city had kind of like built up around the house. So it's like when you were on like the house on the property, it kind of felt like you were in the middle of nowhere, and then you would like walk down the long driveway and there was literally like a Hardee's and like Wendy's and stuff like that, <laughs> that is terrifying. outside the street yeah um and yeah like it was like an old, kind of like a creaky like old house um uh, and I remember like one and like yeah I remember like one like time when I was a kid we we're sitting there in the summer um on like the television upstairs which was like an old like like tube television oh yeah the box box ones yeah like the haunting must have been on one of like the public channels and like catching part of it and be like, oh my, this is this is the spookiest movie ever made. <laughs> uh, Spooky is accurate. Yeah, yes. and like I have like a very like strong like memory of like the part where like Theo and Al, um, Nell are like in the bed together, like the hand and like thinking, oh, that's so creepy. <laughs> Hand was I holding? And then like I used to have like weird nightmares in that house because it was like a weird old house, so. Ooh, yeah. Whatever you saw, like something creepy in there, made it like infinitely more creepy. Um, and then the 1999 one is sort of like the first real horror movie I remember seeing in theaters. Like, um, is, but was it really a real horror movie? I mean, like horror <laughs> movie to like I would have been like what, like I guess like 13 when I saw. It. So it's like a 13. It's the old. horror genre. Exactly. Whether it's a good one or, or a successful one, we'll talk. Like about that's it a, that's a different issue. Um, and I, so I grew up in Israel, even though I'm not like Jewish or Israeli. Like that's a whole. It's a different show. show. That's a different show. Um, That's Lizzie's backstory. We'll cut to that. I mean, Moving on. Um, so I remember like going to like the movie, like one of the movie theater there, like probably like Friday night, and it was just like all like you know like kids and like teenagers, like and like in Israel, like yeah, like kids, you just kind of like roam the street like in gangs, like on weekends, <laughs> um, like but like no adult supervision. Um, and, um, yeah, and so, like, like, movie theater, especially, like, like, if it was a movie that was kind of more geared towards, like, young people, it was just, like, a madhouse in there of just, like, kids running around screaming, and, yeah, so I just remember, like, being in that theater of just, like, out of control, like, 12-year-olds. That, that actually seems like a really good pairing for this, yeah. for that haunting. Yes, exactly, yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, the movie... Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. The, the The second one is much more about trauma of children. Yes. And then the first one is more about, well, I guess it's it's really centered on the trauma of Eleanor mm -hmm. and basically transplanting it to this house. Yes. Hill House is calling her mm -hmm. in both movies. Yeah. I mean, that's like, like the biggest like difference in a way of like whether or not like the house is a traumatized like object or whether or not like Ellen is the traumatized object. I'm like kind of referring to her an object here in like the more like film the study. The movie does too. Yeah, like sort of, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, sort of way um, that like in the first one, it's like whether or not the house is actually haunted is sort of up for debate. Yes, it's um, more psychological about like, do they actually believe her? She's just insane. Okay, exactly, whereas in the other one, it's like, you know, like that house like is, it's haunted and alive, like, yeah. And it, it goes much further. There's yes. statues moving, mm -hmm. a lot, so many statues moving. 
I mean, yeah. we were talking about it before that you said both of them sort of come in different uh, or interesting places in, mm -hmm. in horror history. Yeah. And that this one in 99 was sort of like, oh, we have all these new toys to play with, CGI to make things scary, mm -hmm. and it doesn't succeed at all, I think. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> making it scary, it's just like, oh, cool, we can make things move. <laughs> like, we make statues move, and like, they love putting faces in any sort of a sheet, mm -hmm. curtain. I guess, yeah. I'll... Well, yeah, because like, like moving something like the fabric like that would have been like impossible before CGI. Um, yes. Like, at least in the way that they're doing that. Same thing with like also like how her hair moves in there. It's like, mm. that's like a, like an effect that like to do that with like CGI would have been really impressive. Yeah, like this is sort of like an interesting thing. Like both these movies, um, I, I'm not sure like how well like the like 1999 one did at like the box. I think it made a lot of money just cause like, I, I would have to look that up, but it caught, Jim, how much did like the 1999 haunting make? One moment. Okay, we're gonna, have, while we have our fact check. Jim slash box office mojo. Um, uh, well, while we but have, do you remember how much the budget was though, right? It was somewhere like, over like 60 to 80 million dollars, which it's like nowadays. Budget 80 million, box office 180. Wow, okay. Uh, which is like, it made its money back. It made a little, but like, it's not like a like runaway success. Um, or but we like, would have had haunting too. Too exactly, <laughs> we would have had the haunting too. The, the hauntinging. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm in. Uh, yeah. So, um, with that movie, originally like Steven Spielberg was supposed to direct it, and it was like his like pet project because with like Stephen King, by the way, with Stephen King. So that's actually like Ooh. this whole sort of like world of like. If you know 1999, like, I don't know, that was a great year. <laughs> if we know 1999. If we know 1999. <laughs> um, like, it was, it was a great year for, like, a lot of, like, original properties and, like, movies and stuff like that. Um, I think that, like, the most, like, the highest number of, like, actually original property movies were made in 1999. <laughs> let's, let's go back to, like, the 1963 one. Oh, please. Yeah. So, that one, like, when it came out, it was... Like not really a success, um, and like it got like okay reviews. It was really more like a movie that like in retrospect people considered like like one of the greatest horror movies ever made, one of like the scariest horror movies ever made. Um, I feel like whenever you put that label on something, it puts so much pressure on it to actually be good that it's you know often difficult to live up to that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put that on it now, or at least especially with I think our audiences of today wouldn't be yeah. scared by this movie, but it's, mm -hmm. I think, I mean, what they can do, they can't, they're mm -hmm. limited in what they can do in 1963. Yeah. And I think like the thumping of the house and really just the psychological effect mm -hmm. of this woman, the performances are what make it work. It's very much obviously about trauma and like, you know, like how do like, how does like generational trauma like end up affecting people? Um, and the house is the obvious like metaphor of like building something like that. And then like, um, Nell's character like is she crazy is this house actually haunted and then they said like it's all just about trauma but her character makes more sense in that yeah. movie and also has more agency mm -hmm. because in that movie she steals the car and goes to this house on her own mm -hmm. whereas this one she sort of gets a call and is being kicked out of the house yes. by her and, and so I mean yeah we see that she sort of had trauma with her mm -hmm. in both scenarios she took care of an invalid mother for mm -hmm. 11 years yeah and who was clearly kind of abusive as yeah, well the cane is all we look mm -hmm. at in both movies like basically yeah. there was hitting involved yes <laughs> um yes there was cane abuse um <laughs> our favorite kind. kind um so but in either case like yeah like both of them like start with some sort of like seed of like trauma and then like the original 1960 haunting like takes it to like an actual like logical metaphor sort of place and like has something to say about it whereas like the 1999 one is a bit of a muddled mess that like the best you could say is that like you have to choose to not be a victim anymore would or to like accept uh accept. the accept the the abuse let's like say i'm not a victim i'm accepting this i'm saying no to the abuse and that makes it stop because do you remember what the line was it was it, like it was so, I'm not a victim, I'm a volunteer. I'm right. not a victim, I'm a volunteer, yeah. So like, if you volunteer for trauma or pain or abuse, that somehow is okay? Yeah, um, <laughs> there, there's a lot of like, murky things in that way, and like, also like, the doctor running the psychological experiments should probably- Oh, we gotta talk about Neeson. Tell us should, about- He uh, should have his license revoked. You don't tell the rats, they're actually in the maze. So like, the 1963 one, you're kind of like, smack dab between 
Psycho, 1960, and then Rosemary's, Rosemary's Baby, 1968. Um, and these are sort of two like big moments in like horror movies. And like you can really feel the effects of Psycho on um, the 1963 haunting. In fact, like that's probably why that one was made. Yes. Um, because and like down to the fact that like the main character like her like in, inner monologues while she's driving of like what she's like doing. Staring at me. And then also um, Wise is like you know one best like one they had me award for uh, West Side Story. So like a director who came from like a much bigger like background or things like that, like doing a smaller like psychological horror movie. So like mid 60s to late 60s, it's kind of like a weird like middling ground for like horror movie. Horror movies, a lull. a lull, yeah, like because you haven't quite like moved on from like the sort of Vincent Price sort of like 1950s and kind of horror movies and also like the um, kind of like, you know, my stepmother was a giant ant alien kind of <laughs> oh, genre. The like kind of Corman. Yeah, and then the other, yeah, sort of like, and it, like Hammer Horror was sort of the other sort of big one of like, and then also really what sort of anchored horror movies at that time was more like the talent in them. So you had like your Vincent Price, you had your Christopher Lee, um, your Boris Karloff, those sort of ones that like people came like for like spectacle and events and they came for like particular names, uh, not necessarily theme, like a theme or like a particular like type of horror. Um, and so like this kind of happens like in a period where it's like you had Psycho come out and like Psycho is very different and sort of changes like what horror can be. In fact, um, the first like sort of like academic book published on horror that came out in like the 1960s didn't even call Psycho a horror movie. Like it had like a different like name for it. Like, Suspense, thriller, or so just... It was like it called it like some like 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 psychological thriller horror or something like okay. that, um, because yeah. So is that it like it's like what was horror like kind of was like changing at this moment, and then like Rosemary's Baby comes out in 1968, and that sort of like is kind of seen as a movie that changes a lot about horror in the sense that like you have it, William um, Castle like which if you know like about like House on Haunted Hill yeah. yeah like he yeah, he did House on Haunted Hill. Yeah, Tingler was also him. He's really just like the showman and like kind of like understands like cinema as spectacle. Yes. Um, so he bought the rights to Rosemary's Baby. He wanted to direct Rosemary's Baby. Um, but the studio was like, you know, your kind of thing is sort of over. Have you heard of this like hot new young thing called Roman Polanski? <laughs> hot new young, <laughs> young thing. thing. He um, loves that you called him that. that yes. Um, <laughs> Roman Polanski is also a whole separate effort. So yeah, so they bring Roman Polanski in and like essentially what you have there is like the bringing together of like that like old like school sort of like horror spectacle like Hammer like R R Corman-esque sort of like horror with like Roman Polanski which like we're not gonna like get into him on like a personal level right now but like he's still part of that whole like auteur sort of filmmaking of like the 70s that happens. Um, and that basically kind of completely changes horror from that point on. So that circling back to like the 1963, The Haunting, is it exists in a weird middle ground between like- Those two those, temples. Yeah. yeah, so, and like, it does like a weird, like if you notice with it, like there's a lot of die after shots in it. Um, and also like, it looks really strange. And it's because they filmed, I just read this on Wikipedia. I'm not like, uh, uh, but like. Oh no, take all the credit. <laughs> um, they filmed the whole thing on like a 30 millimeter wide angle lens um, camera. So that's why like the whole movie kind of looks like really like strange and unsettling and like all like the like lines in there are kind of weird. Actually, so I know why I put the movie mm -hmm. on or why I wanted to watch mm -hmm. The Haunting was because it has a queer lens in it, mm -hmm. and it's much better done in 1963 than it is in 1999. The, mm -hmm. the relationship between Nell and Theo, I mean, I think Theo is much more sort of subtle, but also not in the 1963 mm -hmm. version, yeah. but like they actually have some sort of chemistry and relationship, whereas mm -hmm. Catherine Zeta-Jones is Theo, is just sex, yes. and she, and also she isn't just queer, she's, you know, I have a boyfriend, I have a girlfriend, mm -hmm. let's fuck. Like sex is part of the list of things you need to mm -hmm. survive, along with food and water yeah. and sleep. So yeah, but yeah, no, like yeah, the queer lens on. Like I think that's again like another of the sort of like interesting things about the 1963 haunting, and again like it being a much more like psychological movie of like 
you get to know the characters you like kind of like understand like the horror or the weird things that are going on as being part of like their inner like psyche or like their inner sort of like characters um and yeah like what you were saying that like um the 1963 one is like much more forward in some sort of like way that like theo is a queer like i would say she's gay like a gay woman yeah. um and that there is like a sexual tension between her and now um, and she lights up whenever she invites Nell into her room. We have yeah. garbage outside, and this is this trash is day. Tr trash day, and also trash water. That's what uh, <laughs> what I like. Yes. Yeah. and trash cinema. Trash cinema. It's a, <laughs> a tra <laughs> uh, trashy theme, mm -hmm. and, and and so yeah, she sort of lights up, and it almost be becomes like uh, Nell is in between her and then the the doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy doing the experiment mm -hmm. on them, and this one, he's a little bit more ethical mm -hmm. than Liam Neeson. But I, what I don't understand, well, no, he actually is ethical. He's saying, "I'm studying the supernatural. Mm -hmm. You're sort of a part of this experiment." But what I don't get about him is that the whole time there's all these supernatural things going on. He's just like, "Nah, I don't think this isn't supernatural." It's sort of like, "Isn't this what you wanted?" Yeah. Well, which, I guess that's sort of what Liam Neeson does too. Yeah, <laughs> and like, I mean, the kind of to go to like the 1999 one, like straight up when like supernatural things start happening and like Liam Neeson's character is like, well, I did not want, like, we are not insured for this. Like he like tries to shut the whole experiment down. Um, and well, it's, yeah. Well, cause he lies and it's, it's, he says it's an insomnia, an experiment, uh, like an experiment for people that can't yeah. sleep and they're going to take it to the Hill House for some reason. Mm -hmm to study them, but he just really wants to study fear yeah. and people's responses to them. And he has some stupid, um, you know, highfalutin, you know, ideas mm -hmm. about fear that clearly was like Jan de Bont, like, yeah, this is what we're studying this... here. Or like, this is what, why this movie got made at some point mm -hmm. and it got lost in yeah. statues. Well, it's, it's a weird sort of thing that like the 1999 one in some ways is sort of afraid of the themes and like what makes the 1963 one work. Yes. Um, but, like, I haven't read the Shirley Jackson story that this is based off of because I don't read. I just watch movies as, you know, people who... <laughs> Us on this couch. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a question, though. Do, like, was Shirley Jackson queer? Just, like, I'm 100% only basing this off of a movie. The Elizabeth Moss movie with her in it. Um, oh, yeah. Um, is it called Shirley? Yeah. Um, and it's, like, she's um, queer in that. And I don't know if... I know it's uh, it's not actually, like, based, like like hard facts about her it's more of like an interpretation of her right so i don't know if this is like something that someone applied to her or like taking reading leaves. from taking leaves or like taking from her text where like she clearly has queer characters in there um but either way like that is definitely thematically something in shirley jackson's work and right and in the, the most recent netflix mm -hmm. adaptation it's even more mm -hmm. clear like theo is just it's just stated that yeah. she's queer um but it's more of a family thing mm -hmm. although then the the 1999 one yells that it's all about family, but it's not. It's not, <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. So, so back to the 1999 one, being afraid sort of like of the themes of what I'm assuming is like the original text. It's like yeah, um, Theo's character and that one played by Catherine Zeta Jones, just like basically like bust onto the scene and just being like, my boyfriend and my girlfriend don't get along. Oh, and... I want them all to, like, live w with me, but they won't allow it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, like they, they don't get along. Like, yeah. Exactly. And, like, wink, wink at the audience. Did you get that, guys? Like, we're very, like, liberal here. Yeah, look how um, forward we are about um, sex. But it's really just Catherine Zeta-Jones just mm -hmm. strutting. Lily Taylor and her, like, have, like, a brief moment of, like, it's like, oh, is there, like, some electricity between them? But, like, it then never, like... There's none between no, them. No, <laughs> no. They're just, like, a brief moment where, like... Because, like, Catherine Zeta-Jones is like, oh, do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Um, and then, like, that's pretty much all they do with it. There's also not really, like, that, like, tight friendship between them because Lily, Lily Taylor's relationship in this one is, like, with the house and, like, finding out the, like, mythology and story of the house. Which is another thing that's not in the uh, like the 1963 one. The, the yeah, the 1963 one is about a woman who's never belonged anywhere and has never had a place of her own and never had really any sort of life. And this mm -hmm. and and they do sort of try to do that with 1999. We're like, oh, this is my first adventure ever, my first thing that I've ever done. But Which it, her <laughs> first adventure ever is participating in a sleep. Uh, 
like research experiment. Yeah. To be fair, getting nine hundred dollars to stay in that place is kind of an adventure. That's all they got is nine hundred dollars a week. A week. Although I think were they only there like one day? They were there for like three two. nights, so they're not even going to get the nine hundred dollars. <laughs> they should pool the money with the survivors. Um, yeah. Because like, Owen, uh, poor Owen Wilson. Does it make? But he gets the best. Uh, I mean, there's only two deaths, but he gets he gets a good beheading. Yes. That's worth, um, uh, I it, guess it's worth watching the movie for. Just for that. Um, it is like a two-hour movie, which like... Could have been 90 minutes. Minutes, yeah. Um, but yeah, so kind of like back to like... The, <laughs> just like this episode. Yes. Oh my God, what's happening? The 1999 one sort of being afraid of like the themes and like what made the original one work. And also like a sort of like weird, like almost misunderstanding of like the original is it like i feel like it has more to like in common with like those sort of hammer horror movies and like horman and like those other kind of movies that like the 1963 one was trying not to be in a way <laughs> it's such a like a weird interesting point like in cinema and that like they spent like a shit ton of money not just on like the cgi in it but also on the production design. That's the best part of the movie. Yeah, yes, like the sets it, are it, incredible. It's one of the things that, like, like it's sad that you just don't get like movies like production design like that anymore. And like this is like a weird moment where they were still spending a lot of money on that because they were used to doing that. Wow. This is so twisted. And then also like to us, what are very cheesy like you know like CGI effects. But at the time, like I remember seeing it at the time in the theater, be like, wow. Um, <laughs> The ceiling's moving! Right. And now I'm like one of those people, I'm like, oh, a CGI fight scene. Okay, well. Yeah, yeah, look at your watch. Yeah. You, know, um, you don't have any more. Exactly, but, yeah. yeah, like my, like, blank. But that's, that's the equivalent of it. That's yeah. what this, that CGI is just as dated as the watch. Exactly, at this point. yeah. Oh, it is real. But I would say also, like, if you have a good sound system, it, The Haunting has really great sound design. Um, which the original? Oh, no, the, the, the 999 one. Yeah, yeah. one. Um, <laughs> and um like that's something like that's what i kind of remember a lot from the experience it's like how kind of like intense the sound design was which is kind of refreshing because i feel like nowadays all horror movies have the same sound design yeah they sound uh, the same and like the big like sort of like tentpole kind of ones like i'd say like the crimson peak sort of ones which like i'd say like crimson peaks is kind of like the closest to like this sort of movie if you're actually it is a very yeah, yeah. i would say it's also not super successful exactly either. yeah <laughs> i agree i agree and yon dupont dupont's um movie twister did that one win the academy award or was it just nominated for sound gym uh i think i'm trying to i think it won let me check yeah <laughs> um and so like that's sort of like another great sound design movie and also a movie that traumatized me as a child um more so than the haunting uh let's let's just get into the trauma real quick of, I mean, of the uh, twist. of twister yes. my, my mom loves disaster movies she took my sister and i to go see twister in theater and i probably like was like 11 or 10. um it's like very intense the sound design's very intense so that was kind of scary but no what actually traumatized me there's a scene there in a drive-in the shining is on in the background mm. um and just like catching like a few like glimpses of the shining of like the twins in the hall and they have like jack like try to like axe down the door like that scared the hell out of me we also it, it lost both sound categories it lost but it was nominated it, who, who uh, won it lost like sound editing the english patient mm -hmm. and uh sound mixing to ghosts in darkness interesting blame So like Twister, like they use like the sound of like um, like big cats, like lions roaring for mm -hmm. like the Twister sound, um, and lost to a movie about lions. Um, but also, we're pretty sure Jan Devant worked on Roar, right? Maybe he used the sound for Well, Roar. he was probably himself traumatized <laughs> by the lions. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because he was and, injured on, like everyone was injured on, on set of Roar. I was wrong about that. It was only nominated for mixing, mixing. which it lost to English Patient. English, okay, and, never mind. Either way, it would have been funny if he'd also been traumatized by losing to a lion movie yes. after. <laughs> um, he's not the one who had to have, like, like, his skull, like. That's, that's him. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Yeah. Cut to photo of him. Lily Taylor 
Well, I guess no, Lily Taylor wants to leave in this one, although it's very unclear. That's the thing. Every scene, she changes what she wants. She, she's not a real person. That's, okay, accurate, she, yes. Yeah, she's well, not a real person. And then the other, yeah, the other Nell is like, no, this is where I want to be. And then, but she does drive away. Mm -hmm. But she's taking, you know. She's, she's taken by the spirit. And I, or is she? I, yeah, I think she knows what she's doing. Yeah, no, I, I mean... It's, it's not but like I don't think like any of like the haunting stuff is real in like the 1963 one. I think it's all like in her head, in her head, and like group psychosis. Mm -hmm. um, what about the stuff with the wife though, with Grace, who sort of mm -hmm. shows up in the middle? She's mm -hmm. like a skeptic, and I don't know why she's married to this guy yeah. since his whole life is supernatural. And he clearly like is a bit of like has a, a wandering eye. Yeah. Like, oh and, yeah, he's yeah very handsy with now. Yeah. Um, and I think Anthea probably. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, and once again, like, there's a lot of abuse, like, doctor-patient abuse and, like, <laughs> inappropriate, like, psych, like, the kind of stuff that, like, the IRB board would never approve nowadays um, in both of these. Uh, Shame. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, like, what, like, the stuff with, like, Grace, like, I think that, like, she might just be, like, a little, like, un unhinged as well. Like, mm. that's a psychological term for it, unhinged. Yes. Um, but, like, because I, I think that, like, it would, like, track the, like, uh, psychologist like doctor who likes to like sort of like essentially like, abuse um people who are like fra like emotionally fragile. fragile would be like married to someone that he could abuse um which also like kind of fits with like the themes of the movie and so like she herself like even when she kind of like busts in on the scene it's like there's a little bit of like she appears to be very much in control but also like isn't and so i think we're just kind of seeing her like a little unhinged and yeah she's also almost dies almost immediately mm -hmm. so she's the most susceptible mm -hmm. she's the most skeptical as well i mean yeah. luke russ tamblin mm -hmm. dr jacoby um he he actually has an arc too like mm -hmm. he actually believes he's like we have to sell this house because he's like stands to gain this house yeah and he, and but yeah she grace i think it's more of like she was an obstacle for nell because it seemed like nell was choosing between oh i can be with theo or I can be with the doctor, or I can be with the house. Yeah. And then Grace was gonna take the house option from her, which mm -hmm. was the one that she really wanted. And yeah. then she was able to, well, by killing herself, she stayed with the house. So, yeah. yes. And Happy death, movie. And death, they can all be together. I wanted to ask about the, the child mm -hmm. abuse or the child murder in this thing. Cause like, yeah. okay, so Dr. Crane, or mm -hmm. not, no, it's not Dr. Hugh Crane, <laughs> Is the the fucking Doctor Jekyll, <laughs> Mister Hyde, awful caveman looking mm -hmm. man? Yeah. Who of course is evil. Mm -hmm. uh, he he built he this house. Like a lot. Do you notice a lot of like lions in that one? Which again, like <laughs> more more roar references. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I get. <laughs> That's true. The the thing in the fireplace is, is a, a big lion, lion yeah. head, and, and it takes off his head. Yeah, and like it's like the like Hugh Crane. It's like when he like he looks like they try to make him look a bit like a lion. If you know, it comes across honestly as a little bit like brown face. Um, in some of the pictures, yes, it doesn't look great. No, or um, he looks like Beast in Beauty and the Beast, yeah. or just like sort of. Yeah, but I think they were trying to make him look like a lion, and I think we're getting at here of, like, Jan Devant's, like, own personal trauma. Um, I want to see that movie. There's hundreds, she finds a ledger with mm -hmm. hundreds of kids that have died, and yeah. it says about, like, child labor, but mm -hmm. basically he brings them from his factory, his textiles. There's a throwaway line where Owen Wilson's like, oh, this is all for show. He just, like, has a sweatshop, and that seems to be... The truth? Very accurate, yeah. yeah. So, like, this movie in some way was trying to talk about labor child, laws. Yeah, child labor, child. like... Well, like child abuse and like um and, and again like i said like it kind of like just like it's afraid of like doing like the actual like psychological trauma things of like the original source text so it like feels like it has to throw in like the really big like this man was like a child murderer and like abused children uh to rather than like talking about like more like what's like it's much more troubling much more difficult to talk about is like those sort of like family like abuses because like that's sort of like and like Nell in the original one with like her mother like she was like a caretaker to her mother and like talking about like being forced to take care of an elderly family member who maybe raised you but maybe was abusive 
and is abusive while you're taking care of them is that as being a psychologically damaging yeah. thing and like that's much more difficult to talk about than just be like he's a child murderer he, he killed literally hundreds of children um yeah it sort of yeah. just elevates it and then mm -hmm. we lose what is the tension yeah and also just even if you're like losing a parent in any way mm -hmm. is traumatic or yeah. having to take care of it and then you add the extra layer of abuse to it so, yeah and then the 63 one there's even like a question of mm -hmm. if she murdered her mom oh, or like ignored yeah. like there's guilt there about yeah. or whether she just sort of ignored him because uh, or ignored her because she spent 11 years doing yeah. it and i don't blame her at all for ignoring the well, cane exactly yeah <laughs> yeah um and which yes yeah, so again like that's like a much more intense and difficult like thing to discuss versus just like slapping like a giant like story of like skulls in the fireplace kind of thing it's perfect isn't it theo's like character of like being like a gay woman in like the 1960s and like that still being seen at that point as like being like something psychologically wrong with you um so like whatever trauma she's carrying around from that or difficulty she's carrying around from that and then like i said like we talked about like in the 1999 one it's just like we're all gay here we're all <laughs> sleeping with each other um sort of thing um, and that just sort of neuters the character really mm -hmm. like it's trying to do the opposite yeah. but it, it just makes it a flat character yeah um versus like a woman who might be like experiencing trauma and like struggling but she also has esp isn't yeah. that interesting like so she actually has extra she has a gift and also mm -hmm. was like winning at cards and was mm -hmm. the most right about anything yeah so that was sort of giving her uh I don't know, like a gift, like her mm. queerness was actually special. And there versus like being treated as something that like, because I mean, this is also like a whole separate like episode or something like that. But if you're interested, there's a really good documentary called The Celluloid Closet mm. um, that talks about um, the representation of gay people in Hollywood. And really just like up through like even like the 90s, like um, gay people being really only portrayed as villains. Um, and then, like, you get, like, in, like, the 90s, it starts, like, coming in as, like, gay people can be, like, a joke or a punchline or something yeah, like flamboyant that. Yeah, flamboyant friends. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, like, in the 1960s, to have, like, a queer character who is, like, not a villain, even though, like, there is definitely, like, sort of, like, tension between, like, Theo and, like, Nell of, like, is, like, Theo kind of, like, messing with Nell at different points or whatever, but, like, someone who isn't, like, an outright... There's conflict, um, yeah. but it sort of just feels like they both don't know where the other person stands. It's like trust, and it's also like yeah. there's scary shit happening. So it, it, it feels exactly yeah, it feels like 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 it makes sense in that movie. <laughs> yeah, it's freezing in here. Um, Ooh, the cold spot. We never mentioned the cold spot. Your house has a cold spot. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that like our house has just been like you know like when like a kid like watches a movie and it's like I'm a superhero now and like our house watched both the hauntings and it's like i'm a haunted house now um, <laughs> it did a really good job yeah. yeah it was freezing in here and it wasn't cold when i came in yeah well lizzie thank you so much for volunteering to well to actually invite me to your haunted apartment and watching both the haunting movies thank you for having me yeah. and thank you for uh for watching this mad science experiment uh i feel kind of like liam neeson um, but slightly better. <laughs> uh, and I'm doing this, uh, as always, for the Trevor Project, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping LGBTQ plus youth. And uh, yeah, next episode, uh, I'm switching partners uh, and we're getting Jim Wolf on to talk about Slumber Party Massacre Part 2. Um, and that is streaming on Shudder and I think all like Tubi and all sorts of other places. Um, get your pizza ready. Get your wine ready, get your jammies ready, get, I don't know, if, I, I don't know if my brain is ready yet. Um, I'm scared, I'm scared <laughs> for tomorrow. Uh, but I'll see you at the next phase of the moon. In the meantime, let's howl at the moon for the friends we miss, the friends we wish were here to see this.